day of sun, but no fun at the beach. We have a body that's been catching rays long enough to get burned permanently. Yelena is pulling double duty on this case. She'll be joining you in the field. If you need warrants or want interrogations, you'll still need to get back to her desk to make the request. Even for Miami, this is one bright, beautiful day. But it went cloudy forever for this poor guy. Let's talk to our witness before we look around. I'm Yelena Salas with Miami-Dade PD, and this is our crime scene investigator. Are you the citizen who called 911? I am indeed. The EMTs got here in a hurry. Real impressive. But after they took a look at Mr. Diamond, they decided to call you folks in. Probably because of who my boss is, or anyway, was. Because this sure don't look like a crime scene to me. Any case, you folks didn't fool around neither. Great response time. Even so, the boss is turning red as a lobster in this sun. Hope we can get him off the beach pretty soon. What am I thinking of? I'm just, well, this kind of thing doesn't happen every day around here. Thank God for small favors. I work here at the Diamond Estate, Hugo Jackson. Mr. Diamond says I'm his chef. Chief cook and bottle wash is more like it. I maintain the kitchen and create culinary creations. Only to tell you the truth, it's just good old fashioned Southern cooking. And it's what the boss likes, or liked. Man, I'm having trouble dealing with this. Sorry. I go kind of motor mouth when I'm upset or nervous. The boss, Roy. Roy Diamond, unless you started working the Miami Beat, you must have heard of him. Of course, he's been retired a while, but still. Before he took himself out of the game, he was the richest real estate magnate around. Oh, hell. Five, six hours anyway. He must have got to him. His heart wasn't what it used to be. But it's not the worst way to go, huh? Dying to sleep out on your own personal beach. We realize this is hard for you, Mr. Jackson. You and your employer were obviously close. We're going to take a look around the scene. You have to stick around if you don't care to. Man, that's a relief to hear. I like the boss. And having to hang around like this, well, does upset me. But hey, you need me, I'm here. I'll be heading to the beach house soon, though. Soon as possible, we need to move the deceased to the morgue. This intense heat won't be kind to our victim. No wonder the EMTs asked CSI to check this out. Two victims don't die of natural causes simultaneously. Fingerprints on the cap. Let's see who screwed it off, so to speak. Somebody was squeezing the sunscreen. Let's let the lab tell us who. Sunscreen. Common enough beach accessory, but we'll bag and tag it. Pays to be thorough. Better snag this. Might be important. Top page is torn off. Looks like someone tried to destroy this page, but did a bad job of hiding it from us.
shoe print. Hmm. Maybe we're on the right track already. And what a remarkable aquarium this is. An unusual array of aquatic life. Or do we have a death also? Just as we try to be careful about even stray details, for example, an otherwise immaculately clean fish tank with a single fingerprint. If I remember correctly, aquariums are meant to show aquatic life, not aquatic death. Looks like someone needs to clean that up, but not us. What now? Already have a team on the way. That sun isn't doing us any favors. Glad we got the victim off that beach when we did. Much longer and he'd be well done, and not in a good way. Don't know if you know this, but the paperwork for this autopsy has been held up. Hopefully you'll find out why. As for our four-legged friend, there's not much I can tell you about his demise right now. I'd have considered that a decent analysis if it weren't for the man's best friend dying at the same time. Two deaths at once, despite the difference in species, is too coincidental. Definitely a job for CSI. With an unmarked body like this, I have to consider poison. Even though it's not a common cause of death, I look for injection marks, which are not always easy to locate, and a wide variety of toxins share similar effects, spreading through the bloodstream and shutting down the body. I can only give you a DNA sample for now. If you want a blood sample, you have to wait until I have permission to perform an autopsy. I thought you'd never ask. Well, at least it's not an alligator this time. But the truth is, I'm no expert on canine anatomy. We can make it happen, but not right away. If you can crack this case without a dog autopsy, that would be a good thing. Hey. That fingerprint's over in the computer for you. Somebody was sticking their fingers where they shouldn't have been. Prints in the computer. Hey, don't mention it. Prints in pretty rough shape to do us any good in the computer. But I sent it over anyway. Print's been scanned. It's on the computer. Amplified and graphed that DNA, scanned it into the computer already. Go for it. I ran it through the ESDA equipment to see if I could lift an image from it, and nothing. If something was written on the top page, it was with a light touch. If you want to know the score, better put the pieces together. Chemical contents of that bottle of sunscreen are over at the computer. Don't mention it. So I did further analysis and... Sorry, if you're looking for a specific toxin, nothing special. It's a red herring. You weren't expecting this to lead anywhere, were you? I may be a cat lover, but I don't enjoy seeing any dead pet.
scorecard, and somebody was making out pretty darn good. Yeah, helpful, but a first name is a far cry from a positive identity. Maybe we can find some evidence that will get us the rest of it. I know they say it's in the math, but these numbers are Greek to me. Prince belonged to a Martin Fordham, who made it into our computer thanks to a DUI. Let's track him down. The helpful fingers are on the hand of a Denise Diamond, at one time under suspicion in the death of her very late husband, only later it was deemed accidental. Maybe she can cast some more sunshine on our beach fatality. Standard issue sunscreen. No special secret ingredients. Not a murder weapon. Finding your way around the Diamond Estate, okay? It could be a little overwhelming, especially with that shyster Donnie Bronson underfoot. What was that you said, Hugo? Hope I didn't hear what I thought I heard. Nothing negative, Mr. Bronson. Just said you were a shy soul, and always welcome around the Diamond Digs. I won't even bother being offended. First place, Roy never eats. Eight. Breakfast. Just not a meal that was on his schedule. A bad habit that I tried to break him of. But even if he had broken fast, I gotta say no way. You see, I wasn't just the cook around here. I was also the king's taste tester. Roy, Mr. Diamond, he insisted I sample everything I prepared for him right in front of his eyes. Nothing much around here is mine. That fish tank, like everything and everybody around here, belonged to the boss. Paranoid's a little harsh. I love the man, but he was like a lot of wealthy types, self-important as hell. He liked to say a big man has big enemies. It was part of his power trip, far as I'm concerned, playing king with a food taster. Hey, I like what I prepare in my kitchen. Don't bother me none taking a bite of each and every good thing I fix. If so, just suppose what I was saying. That dog was never allowed any table scraps. The boss considered feeding a dog from the table a dirty, filthy habit and never indulged. He loved that dog and fed him the best. The best in kibble, that is. Alex's autopsy of the victim will rule out food. Or not. Uh, excuse me? Remember little old me? The most famous lawyer in town? I have to insist that you put a hold on any autopsy. It's just not gonna happen. Roy Diamond had strict religious beliefs that preclude any such procedure. Well, isn't that special? We'll just have to look into that convenient religious belief of the deceased and get back to you, Counselor. And thanks for all this great help you're giving us. Hey, ask away. Sure, that's Mr. Diamond's running score. You know, of who's gonna inherit what when he dies. Am I? Prophet? Hell no! That was his pooch! And if you're wondering what a dog was doing in his will, you need to know two things. First, he really did love that mutt, probably more than any person in his life. And second, he had some sixth sense of humor. He could be a real sadistic SOB. Seemed to get no bigger kick out of anything than playing the people in his life one off against the other. Me? I kinda dug the twisted old dude. And why not? He gave me a good job and a good life. But the relatives, 
Man, he played them like a hand of cards. According to this note, Roy planned to change his will and leave everything to his dog. Glad to give him. I got nothing to hide from you folks. Very well. Mrs. Diamond, Denise, is Mr. Diamond's daughter-in-law, wife of Roy's late son. But don't get the idea that she was living off her late hubby's rich daddy. There's no harder worker on this estate. She's almost a personal assistant to Mr. Diamond. You could even say a servant. I know Martin. Lives right here on the estate. Mr. Diamond's personal valet. Sort of the butler around here. Hey, hey, a guy with a personal food taster is bound to have a butler, right? No problem. I'll round them up for you. They'll be around here somewhere. Oh, here they are now. Are these the authorities? I can't afford to be tied up long. There are funeral arrangements to make. Or is this about Donnie Bronson going over the will with us? Isn't that a little ghoulishly premature? Hey, don't look at me, Denise. I just happen to be here to talk to your father-in-law about certain legal matters. Martin's right. These are, in fact, the authorities, including a rep from the crime lab. So keep in mind, you both have rights. Always thoughtful, isn't he? Mr. Fordham, Ms. Diamond, sorry to bother you at such a difficult time. We just have a few questions for you. No problem. I'm sure we'll have whatever answers you might need. I'm not concerned about my rights. I'm well aware Mr. Bronson is a little overly cautious in such... situations. Yeah, it's a real tragedy. Let me know what you need from me. Try to help. In my room performing various duties. On a farm they'd call it doing chores. If anybody told you I was anywhere else doing anything else, they're liars. Right, Hugo? I mean, I didn't tell these nice people anything, except what happened this morning on the beach. Mrs. Diamond, we're not accusing you of anything. We're asking routine questions that we'd ask anyone in this situation. Why, was I supposed to have one ready? I don't get this. Roy died on the beach of a heart attack or something, right? He may have been poisoned. What? This is a... a murder? That's crazy! Roy was a tyrant, I won't lie to you, but... I don't know anybody who'd kill him. Now what? You want to dredge up that horrible tragedy? Why don't you people just throw me down some stairs or beat me with a rubber hose or something? My husband perished in a terrible boating accident, all right? It's something I don't discuss and try very hard not to think about. I live here on the estate. Why don't you people come talk to me when you get your facts straight and your act together? Then I'll be glad to help, really. Tell me what you need. Mr. Diamond may not have been the most lovable man on the planet, but he was good to me, and I'll do whatever I can to help you find out what happened to the old boy. It's mine, though technically I suppose Roy's. I've been living in a kind of fishbowl myself. Kind of nice to control somebody else's environment for a change. Sarcasm aside, I've been into aquatic life since I was a kid. Kind of an expert by now. Actually, yes. I spent some time with him this morning. Fact is, he seemed pretty chipper to me. He was alive and well and full of prunes when I left him on the beach. I went to my quarters for... <laughs> this will sound strange, but for a nap. I know, I know, it was still morning, but I'd had a sleepless night. Should say, another sleepless night. This insomnia is a real pain. 
It's starting to affect my work habits. I'll be in my room here on the estate. Feel free to stop by, but I know less than nothing, really. The ever-present Donnie Bronson, the legal profession's bad penny. Just kidding, Don. What's the occasion this time? We don't even have a suspect yet. Are you sure you have a murder? Hugo filled me in. I'm assuming you're here because of the importance of my late client. Roy and I were very close. He was an older man, sure, but young at heart. And my heart is heavy because of this tragic loss. Let me know how I can help. As I indicated, I was Mr. Diamond's attorney. We had an appointment today to discuss his will, ironically enough. Imagine that. He passes away on the very day he was set to update his last will and testament. Much as I want to help Miami Dade's finest, I just can't go around handing out legal documents belonging to a client, deceased or living, just on the whim of the investigators at the scene. Follow the correct procedure, and of course I'll cooperate. Cooperate fully, as always. Oddly enough, not long ago at all. Only two weeks. Of course, Roy had a thing about his will. I guess I'm not violating any confidence by telling you we updated it on virtually a monthly basis. But then his fortune was fluid, too. You know how stocks rise and fall in this economic climate. My secretary gave me an urgent message from Roy. Apparently my client had changes to make that would change everything. Now, now, please. I'm already on the rough edges of compromising attorney-client privileges. Now you've fallen off those edges. If I knew, I couldn't say. But I'll spare you the trouble of getting bent out of shape, and remind you that I didn't directly speak with my client. As I, I said, this was second-hand news. My secretary informed me of this latest diamond crisis. I never thought I'd hear myself say this, Donnie, but please stick around. We'll be getting a court order for that will. Hey, I'll hang on as long as I can, but I am a busy man. Your time belongs to the city, but with a guy like me, well, like the man says, time is money. Can I help you out in this case? I'll have to refer to the state legal database to see if a person's religious beliefs can prevent an autopsy from being performed in a murder investigation. Good! Religion is not a legitimate cause to block it. We can now perform our autopsy. No problem. Done. Now let's return to everyone's favorite ever cooperative attorney, Donnie Bronson. I'm sure he'll find the will to give us that will. Any way I can help? The eyes are the windows of the soul, they say. But the mouth is the door to the furnace room. Ingestion's the most common method of poison entering the human system. If nothing else, we should rule that out by checking the victim's stomach contents. Like I said, I'm no canine expert, but I think I can handle that no problem. Here you go. Great. Let's get started with it, then. I'll prep the body. Okay, honey. Let's see what we can find. I thought you'd never ask.
Yes? Scan that print, and the computer's got it. Always the bearer of fine gifts, aren't you? I sent the sample to the computer and set up a special search link for you. But if you're looking for a specific toxin in this blood, good luck. A dog's metabolism is faster and works different than humans. I'm afraid our lab equipment won't give you the accuracy you're looking for, but I guess it's worth a try. Set up a special link on the computer for that. Hugo cooked up a nice lie. We'll put him on the spot and see what he has to say. Looks like Valera was right. Our canine friend was most likely poisoned. But his high metabolic rate has made it difficult for our equipment to pinpoint the poison. So we can probably conclude that Roy didn't ingest any toxins, but that still doesn't rule out poisoning as a cause of death. Certainly. Like you, I only want to support the laws of the land. Here it is. I hope it furthers the course of justice. You've seen everyone, and you have the will. I need to get back to a thousand matters. Paying matters. If you don't mind. I hardly imagine we've seen the last of each other. That's enough for now. Look. I'm the most honest man you're likely to talk to today, but around the diamond dwelling, I'm low man on the totem pole. That aquarium is strictly Martin's turf, and he don't like nobody fooling with it. If he even knew I'd been near it, guy might have asked the old man to fire me. And the old man just might have. Well, the bastard has more power than me, and when I say bastard, that could be literal. See, rumor has it Martin was Mr. Diamond's love child, which makes sense, except for that old man didn't have no love in him. Depends on his whim, but she'd benefit in one sense at least, in that the old guy would finally stop making plays for her. See, Mr. Diamond would put his hands on her inappropriate like, and put double meanings in what he said to her. Man, sometimes it got so embarrassing, I just had to walk away. That's enough for now. I figured you people might drop by. Hey, uh, sorry if I got out of line before. Can I get you a drink or anything? I have coffee made. Thanks, but we won't be here that long. After my husband's death, Roy invited me to stay on. We'd been living with him. So I stuck around thinking how gracious Roy was, only it turned out he expected something in return. So I became a kind of assistant to Roy, which sounds better than it is. I get hit with some pretty menial tasks. But hey, Roy could have just tossed me out on my behind. You may have already guessed that Roy Diamond wasn't Mr. Warmth. Of course, you don't make big money in this country unless you've got a big ego, and big shots make big enemies. He used to say that himself. I might be able to tell you something about that. Running score? Huh? I don't know what you're talking about. That just sounds like one of his sick jokes. He changed that will more often than I changed his sheets. Which I did every damn day, by the way. Look, he was a real Romeo in his day. 
but in his golden years, it was all talk. Did he put his hands on me? Some. Nothing over the line, though. Hey, I'm a big girl. I can take care of myself. Why? Do you need my permission? Knock yourself out. Fingerprints. Nice catch, partner. Why does Denise have a syringe in her bedroom? Does she have a medical condition? What's this glass vial doing here? You know what, let's get Valera to see if it contains anything interesting. Hello? Is anybody here? Here, in the bathroom! Well, looks like the safari found me. Navigating the grounds of this estate can be a challenge, I know. How can I help? By answering some questions. We're looking at this as a murder now, and that opens other possibilities. Hey, I love the guy. He was larger than life, you know? But to an outsider, he could seem a penny-pinching, egomaniacal, thoughtless jerk. Also to an insider. And a towering figure like Roy, as I've said, can make his share of big enemies. Only, since his retirement, his world is a lot smaller. He wasn't active enough to make new enemies, and the old ones probably felt he'd pretty much fallen off the face of the earth. That ridiculous notepad? Ah. That was just a whip he cracked. Way to keep us all hopping and in line. But the strong implication was, harder you work, the more you inherit. Nothing on that for you. Sorry. In the latest draft, you mean? Maybe because I work my butt off and she drags hers. But that's too harsh. She had pressures I never had. Namely, he wasn't trying to get me in bed. Periodically, he got pissed at her, after she'd really stand up to him. Oh, you know that, do you? We don't advertise it. Indeed he was. Was he a good father? As good as he knew how. Did I love him? As well as I knew how. What would you like to know about that? Oh, I didn't take that seriously. That's just Roy's sick sense of humor. I might have worried more if I didn't know he changed wills like some guys change shirts. Guys, you know I'm on your side in this. But unless the law requires it, I'm going to have to say no. I've done nothing wrong, and that's a real invasion of my privacy. It would also provide a public record of who I am, and I don't know yet whether I'll ever go public with my real identity. Don't take this wrong, but no. I've answered your questions, but I am not going to have my privacy invaded while you go on a fishing expedition. That's enough for now. What now? Piece of cake, now that we have permission. Here you go. What's up? Print's been scanned. It's on the computer. You want a chemical analysis of this blood, so I sent it over to the computer. Hey, what are friends for? Nothing new to report. I'm not gonna waste your time sending this empty syringe over to the computer. There's liquid in this file. I'll send it over to the computer.
Tetrodotoxin, lethal poison, very rare. Tetrodotoxin, lethal toxin, most commonly found in pufferfish, if I'm not mistaken. So the toxin in a vial matches the toxin we found in Roy's blood. I think we just found our cause of death. An incriminating evidence against Miss Diamond. What do you need? With tetrodotoxin in a deceased blood and a vial of the stuff in Denise's room, you got plenty to talk to her about. How many times are you people gonna bother me? I already helped. Maybe I need to call Donnie Bronson back in. Your privilege. But I doubt he can help you much, considering the evidence we found. Of course, you might clear it up easily. I might be able to tell you something about that. I might be able to tell you something about that. Of course not. Why would I want Roy out of the way? My work may not be fulfilling, but I have a nice life in great surroundings. He wouldn't have lived forever anyway. Martin's a diabetic. He takes insulin twice a day and sometimes I inject him. What it was doing in my room, I really can't say. Other than somebody is fitting me for a frame. I don't know what to tell you about that. Tetra, what the hell? What is this? Are you planting evidence? What kind of frame is this, anyway? No frames evident just yet, Miss Diamond. But one picture is clear. The toxin found in your bedroom is the same one that seems to have ended Mr. Diamond's life. Okay. Okay, everybody, step back. You're supposed to be detectives, right? You should be looking at Martin, the bastard son. You have any idea how bent out of shape he'd get with the games Roy put him through? I could hardly blame the guy for whipping up a toxic unwake-me-up call for his father. What I do blame him for is framing me. Can't you see? I stood to inherit too. Having me out of the way put less players on Roy's scorecard. And don't forget, Prophet was sent to the big doggy hotel in the sky too. Hell, have you checked out his room? He's got more weird chemicals and stuff in there than a pharmacist. Don't trust the labels, either. Check that stuff out. That's enough for now. Maybe finding that evidence in Denise's room was a little convenient. Martin could be a killer clever enough to plant clues implicating somebody else with a good motive. Actually, yes. What? You don't have proper grounds. And after I was so openly cooperative. Wait till Donnie Bronson hears about this. He'll have you up on charges. That's enough for now. Just because we know from Denise that Martin's diabetic, that doesn't instantly make the clear liquid in this bottle insulin. Let's run a check. I wonder if Mr. Diamond could have been killed by injection. Let's get Valera to process this. Insecticide. This could be extracted and used as a lethal injection like the one our victim received.
Now this syringe appears used. If Martin doesn't feel inclined to donate his DNA, we may just have to look elsewhere. Get the point? Yes? Prints in the computer. Hey, don't mention it. Check the computer. I've set up a special search link for you. No problem. These are new needles, unused. Processing them would be, well, pointless. Ectocide. Organophosphates, carbamates, paradichlorobenzenes. Fends off all kinds of critters and creepy crawlies. Also, a deadly toxin. A single drop could be fatal. And worse, it can be absorbed through the skin. And no, I'm not an expert on this subject. Our resident tox guru, Ruben Alazar, filled me in. He's processed this poison and sent it over to the computer. If Martin and our victim were father and son, the DNA won't match, but we'll be close enough to confirm relation. Martin is Roy Diamond's offspring, all right. Is that why Martin was in line for the bulk of the estate? Insulin, all right. Another dead end. This substance may be capable of murder, but it's innocent in this case. This bug killer didn't hurt a fly. Hey, what do you need? Martin is the victim's son and was in line for most of the estate. But his father was about to change his will and leave his money not to the bastard, but to a literal son of a bitch. Sounds like a motive for murder to me. Guys, I'm well... I feel embarrassed about our last encounter. I think my father's death was working on my emotions harder than I knew. I shouldn't have gone off on you like that when you brought that perfectly legal warrant. Consider me back on the team. Of course I am. I was his son, his closest living relative, and that's why Denise is so resentful of me. Seems like every time things start to ease up between Denise and me, Roy would give her a hard time and she'd just take it out on me. If she thinks I murdered Roy and that I'm trying to frame her for it, well, she's going off big time. You just can't take her seriously. There's no question my father loved that pooch. He liked to throw the fact in my face, Denise's too, that he preferred it to us. But that was just part of the casual cruelty a powerful guy can indulge in. Really, he was just trying to get us to work harder for him and cater to him, even more, before his next revision of the will. Before you go down that wrong road, consider. Roy changed his will as often as he changed his mind. And in most drafts, I was on top, so all I needed to do was wait out his latest whim. I did not frame Denise. Look at the facts. I've never been involved in a murder investigation before, but she has. And Roy was making her life hell, coming on to her, threatening to cut her off if she didn't come across. But think it through, guys. If both that pooch and I are out of the way, who inherits? Poor little Denise becomes poof. Poor little rich girl. And what about the notes? Did she tell you about those? What notes, Martin? 
It's a cryptogram that Roy wrote up and was going to give to Denise. He would write them up on occasion in code so that no one but Denise could read them. Then he would have Hugo deliver them, thinking that he wouldn't be able to read them, like Hugo even cared what was in the notes. Roy accidentally dropped this one and I picked it up, with the intention of returning it to him, but he got the best of me. I didn't know what to do. I didn't want to get caught with it, but I didn't want Roy to know that I'd read it either. So I held on to it. So what does it say? I can't remember exactly. You should probably just crack it yourselves rather than rely on my hunches. Sorry, I can't be of any further help for now. Hey. Ooh, a secret letter and code, huh? High tech. Shouldn't be too hard for you. I'll set the characters up under a special search link in the computer. Oh my. And Denise said that she could handle herself. It doesn't look that way to me. What do you need? Yeah, let's have another chat with him. I wouldn't go that far. I'd never bring any charges or anything. Not unless it was assault with a dead weapon. He was an old perv. That's all there is to it. Martin handed us a note suggesting Roy was getting frisky with you, Denise. Can't you see what Martin's up to? He is working very hard to make me look like the guilty party. I did not do this crime. I'm just an easy target. I stood to make money when Roy died, all right? What better scapegoat? And, uh, look, that stuff you told me about? Tetrodotoxin? That rang a bell. But at the time, I couldn't place it. Now I'm just sure I heard it before. From Martin. He was bragging about his rare fish and stuff this one time. His octopus, in that tank, uses a toxin to paralyze its prey. I'm almost positive the word Martin used for that poison was, whatchamacallit, tetrodotoxin? I think that fish tanks do for a cleaning. Enough already. That's all I have. You keep bringing me dead animals, and we're gonna have the pet activists on our tails. What's up? Blue-ringed octopus. Beautiful little creatures, but oh so deadly. This one isn't anymore, and not just because he's dead. He also has been drained of all his toxin. Any way I can help? I thought you'd never ask. Other than it's dead? Well, there's a tiny puncture mark above its tentacles. Could have been caused by a syringe.
Hey, what do you need? Let's invite him back. Sorry, I can't be of any further help for now. What would you like to know about that? Is that what killed Roy? Tetrodotoxin? How horrible. But you need to be very clear on one thing. I would never harm any of my aquatic friends. Not even to take down my worst enemy, which my father was not, incidentally. The octopus was drained of its toxins by a syringe, and you are the expert in the house when it comes to aquatic sea life. As far as I can tell, you are the only one with the means and the knowledge to do this act. That is true, but everything that I know about blue-ringed octopus and pufferfish, everyone in this household knows. I talk about it all the time. I've even had discussions with Hugo and Denise on how to extract the toxins. Talk to them. It was one of them. Nothing else right now, guys. Sorry. Hey, ask away. Do I look like a sushi chef to you? Get real, fellas. Just cause you found a lousy little fingerprint on my glass don't mean I cooked up Mr. Diamond's murder. Well, I spotted these fooling around in the water, which is dangerous considering that octopus. Anyway, when she walked off, I checked things out. Everything in the fish tank looked cool, so I just kind of put it out of my mind. Slipped my mind till this very moment. About an hour after she was at the fish tank, I saw her outside digging in the sand. I never saw her playing around out there before. Not exactly the sandcastle type, Denise. So I forgot about it till now. Had it made that big an impression, I guess. Not compared to Mr. Diamond dying and all. Can I help you out in this case? Let's invite him back. I don't know what to tell you about that. I don't know what to tell you about that. That's enough for now. Someone stray sunscreen. Something else along those lines might make it. It's a fake fingernail. But real enough to nail a killer, well, maybe, if he got torn off from an actual fingernail. Yes? Special Link is waiting on the computer. A gold, or DNA anyway, from where the fake nail attached to the real one. It's in the computer. The fake nail belongs to a very real Denise Diamond. DNA is on file from the investigation of her husband's death. Tetrodotoxin. Now we know how the poison was applied. Absorbed, not injected. Denise's false nail probably snapped off when she dug that hole to hide the spiked sunscreen. Hey, what do you need? Yeah, let's have another chat with him. Excuse me? 
What are you guys doing? Drinking on duty? We're perfectly sober, Denise. Much as you were when you coldly decided to do something about Roy after all his still harassment and game playing with yourself and his other heirs. You siphoned off some octopus's deadly toxin from the fish tank and injected it into Roy's sunscreen. Then you hid the evidence while Roy did his part by dying a quick and easy death. You substituted another sunscreen bottle, then framed yourself easily, pinning the tail on Martin. What you hadn't planned was that little pooch trying to lick his dead master awake in of the fatal sunscreen. Now see, since Pooch was the latest heir in Roy's merry-go-round of wills that accidentally cast further suspicion on what could have been mistaken as heart failure, particularly since Roy's religious beliefs would have headed off an autopsy. That's quite a shaggy dog story, guys. Here's another. Once upon a time, there was a girl who got tired of a dirty old man putting his hands all over her and trying to blackmail her into putting out to get an inheritance that was rightfully hers anyway. If this world was at all fair, a creep like Roy Diamond could never abuse everybody around him and get away with it just because he's rich. You like that story? Then prove it in court. Whoever put an end to his cruelty deserves a medal, not condemnation. In the meantime, I want to see Donnie Bronson. Good work. This is a fine example of looking for the evidence and then listening to it. Just because the victim wasn't the nicest man under the sun was no excuse for what Denise Diamond did.